Today we reached a major milestone of our field work. Ben and Justin were about to recover two sediment traps from the ocean, the 99th and 100th trap of their careers. We were excited about achieving such a feat, but didn't want to celebrate before the traps were safely brought back on deck. And then something completely unexpected happened to trap number 99. That's a tuna! This is not what we were trying to capture in our sediment traps. Oh, 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 over there. Yeah. <laughs> These sediment traps are designed to capture the microscopic particles sinking from the surface. I guess you could call this tuna the largest particle collected in a sediment trap. Although collecting a large fish was exciting, we were hoping that the recovery of the second sediment trap would be less eventful. Unlike Ben and Justin, this is the first time I've used sediment traps as part of my research, and it has been fun to learn how they work. This is the space where I prepare the sediment traps for deployment. In addition to the net traps, I have been deploying a second type of trap that consists of four cylindrical tubes that are open on the top. I add a dense poison to the bottom of the tube so that the particles that settle there will be preserved. One of the tubes contains a jar with a thin gelatinous layer on the bottom. The particles collected in the gel are easy to see on a microscope so I can visually identify what is sinking. These tube like traps are deployed on the same line as the net trap. The net trap also collects sinking particles as it hangs vertically in the water. Its large size makes it particularly good at collecting a large number of particles in a short amount of time. By deploying these two traps together, we can quantitatively measure the amount of organic carbon sinking from the surface ocean, identify what types of particles are sinking, and extract the molecular signals that may indicate why these particles are sinking. After paying out 150 meters of line, we attach floats at the surface to keep the sediment traps from sinking to the bottom of the ocean. The traps are then free to float away from the ship. Science operations on the ship continue overnight while our traps drift away with the currents. The next day, we find the traps using the ship's radar. Even after 100 deployments, I'm still amazed that we can find these tiny specks that are adrift in a vast ocean. It's always exciting to see what was collected by the sediment traps once we get them back on deck. However, the samples are usually not as surprising as what we collected in trap number 99 today. This unfortunate fish probably found his way into our trap while chasing down a meal of smaller fish. These were also found inside the net trap. Fortunately for our science, when trap number 100 was recovered, it did not contain any unwelcome creatures and we were able to collect the microscopic particles that we were interested in. These are the sinking particles we collect onto filters, which will be used to measure how much carbon is sinking from the surface ocean, and also to characterize the molecular signals produced by these particles. Although finding large animals in the trap was exciting, I can honestly say I'm way more excited to look at the microscopic organisms collected in the gel at the bottom of one of these traps. I never know what I'm going to discover when I look through the microscope. These microscopic creatures, usually just single cells, are so beautiful and complicated. Although most of these organisms are smaller than the width of a hair, their influence on the chemistry of the earth is enormous. The growth of these tiny cells, and whether they sink, also affects the organisms on earth that we're more familiar with, including the tuna that swam into our net, and also the excited people on the ship. By characterizing the plankton that sink from the surface ocean and the molecular indicators of that process, we can better quantify the influence of these organisms on the global environmental system, one sediment trap at a time.